Hi there, I hope you're well. In the workshop this week, we're taking a look at the Mac Alistair entry-level plane saw from British retailer Screwfix, and we'll look at that in the context of Lidl's Parkside plane saw, because that's going to become available quite soon as well. So yes, every year, like a returning swallow, Lidl's Parkside plane saw comes back into stores around about the 6th of June and lays claim to the crown for cheapest plane saw in the UK. This year, it's coming in at just under £70. Uh, whereas the uh, Mac Alistair from Screwfix was a direct replacement for my personal favourite uh, entry-level plunge saw, the Titan. Uh, I bought this one for about £80 a few weeks back, and this is available in some stores now for around about £70 as well. It's almost like they knew the Parkside was coming. Uh, let's get the Big Mac out of the box, see what you get, and then we can compare the two saws directly. So the scope of delivery for these kind of saws is pretty well established. A slightly odd-shaped box containing the saw itself. The main attached mains cable, dust port, uh, book of words, and a set of brushes. And in the rest of the box here, a pair of 700mm guide rails with joining bars and an Allen key. So no great surprises there. Let's have a quick look at these two saws feature for feature. So it's got to be said that both these saws are very similar. The out-of-the-box experience is very similar, and if you've got any experience with these types of saws at all, then you'll be up and cutting very quickly. If you haven't, then can I suggest you take a look at the Track Saw Workshop series of videos. Uh, there's a playlist that has all of those in there, as well as a playlist that has all my Track Saw related stuff in there as well. Track Saw Workshop was a set of videos that took you right from the very start, from unboxing, from trimming back the splinter guard, all the way through things to watch out for and things to improve with your plunge saw, with your track saw. So if you are new to plunge saws, to track saws, I'd recommend you go and take a look at that. As I said, these two saws are very similar, like most other entry-level plunge saws. They're both 240 volts only. They both have a 1200 watt brushed motor. Neither of them offer a soft start or a break. They both come with a 24 tooth blade that's perfectly decent considering the price of the saw and that blade is 165 mil by 20 mil bore. That's the same as the Makita, the DeWalt, the Triton, so there are plenty of blade choices available to you. I particularly like the Triton 48 tooth blade at around the 10 to 12 pound mark. That's a good cheap upgrade to make to these saws. The stock blade on the McAllister has a 2.2 millimeter kerf, that's the thickness of the blade, whereas the stock blade on the Parkside is 2.6 millimeters. That doesn't really make much difference in the grand scheme of things, but if you do trim back the splinter guard with the stock blade, then swap it out for something more standard like the uh, 48 tooth Triton blade, then you'll find that your cut line and your splinter guard won't quite match, so you've either got to replace the splinter guard or perhaps peel it off and move it out a little bit, and both of those procedures I talk about in the track saw workshop series. When it comes to actually changing the blade, both saws offer very similar ways to do this. A simple selection, plunge, and the saw will lock, then you can remove the blade with the Allen key. Uh, at this price point, no automatic spindle lock, of course, you have to do that manually. And it's the same sort of story with the park side as well. Lift up a lever, plunge, and it locks. And manually select the spindle lock. So, so far so good. Let's have a quick look at the guide rails, which is where the two saws start to differ. So guide rails, yes, I know I bang on about guide rails a lot whenever I do these kind of videos, but that's because it's important. It affects the quality of your cut. It's literally where the rubber meets the workpiece. And it's one of the first things that most new track saw users, plunge saw users, want to buy. It's an extra set of rails so that maybe they can extend the length of the cut, maybe rip full sheets. Uh, kudos to Lidl's for enabling that. Most entry-level plunge saw makers don't sell spare rail. Uh, Lidl don't exactly sell it, but if you phone their customer services, they will put you in touch with the manufacturer who will sell you an extra pair of 700mm rails for around about £25 uh, the last time I checked. Anyway, they will come from Germany, so it does take a little while, but they are very reasonably priced. Of course, if you do then rip a full sheet, that means you've got four pieces of rail, three joins in that 2.8 meter length. So that's not really ideal in many ways, but it is a very effective, very cost effective way of getting a longer rail like that. Unfortunately, Parkside have 
gone their own way, little have gone their own way with the, the rail style in many ways, uh, although it does have the standard Festool pattern, 16 mil rib, and I'm calling it the standard pattern because Festool patented, patented this in 1980. Uh, on the left-hand side, they have a slightly different arrangement. They have this sort of open channel. That makes it a little bit more challenging, say, if not downright impossible, to use things like commercially available parallel guides. The McAllister rails, on the other hand, uh, follow the standard Makita pattern. This is like a standard Festool rail, but with an additional little anti-tipping lip. Unfortunately, that anti-tipping lip can get in the way of some things, but you can use third-party guides, like parallel guides, or rail squares with no problem whatsoever. The McAllister rails are surprisingly sturdy though, genuinely very thick material. In fact, much thicker than the Makita rails that they're based on, or the Triton rails, and certainly than the Festool rails. This gives you a little bit of a problem if you are joining to those particular rails, as you have a bit of a step where the two rails meet. So if you do need to do that, obviously you'd need to have the McAllister rails upstream of the other rails. Obviously you get the best quality and the least problems when you use rails from the same manufacturer and at the moment uh, the Evolution 2 rail set, two 1400mm rails, is still the best uh, twin guide rail package out there at around £70 for uh, two 1400mm rails with joining bars and a case. And one more thing about the Parkside before we leave the guide rail section altogether. The Parkside saw has a slightly wider base which makes it impossible to use on Makita pattern rails. That extra little anti-tipping lip really does get in the way. That's a real disappointment because the Makita 3 meter rail is far and away the cheapest way of getting a long single rail if that's what you need. And unfortunately the Parkside saw simply won't run on that or any other Makita pattern rail. But the uh, McAllister will and pretty much any rail that you can throw it at. So much for the similarities. What about the differences between the two? Well, there's not a whole lot, to be honest. Uh, at the McAllister, you've got a provision for the anti-tipping thing, if you choose to use that on Makita-style rails, whether that's a, a, <laughs> a bonus or not is entirely up to you. What absolutely is not a bonus, in my opinion, is the uh, anti-kickback dingus. Uh, we saw that on the original Titan and also on the uh, Triton saws that I looked at recently. Again, it, the problem with that is that it's uh, not possible to disengage it permanently. It's kind of always on. And that makes the saw very difficult to use. As I've said before, I would never condone the removal of a factory fitted safety feature, even one that was held on, with a single screw from underneath. And then finally, snugging the saw down onto the rail is very much a two-handed job on the McAllister. Uh, and that's a one-handed job on the park side, much uh, simpler and easier to do. You don't get provision for uh, the anti-tipping thing, so I've never felt that's uh, a great loss. But otherwise, they are, frankly, very similar. If you really, really, really want to nitpick, then the fact that the uh, dust hose isn't fixed, it's just flexible like this, and the park side uh, is, I suppose, a negative as opposed to a fixed but movable one. Uh, on the McAllister. McAllister comes with a three meter cable, whereas the Parkside has four. Uh, McAllister has a two year warranty, and the Parkside has three. But other than that, there's very little to choose between them. So how on earth do you go about choosing between them? And that is the question, isn't it? They kind of look similar, they work in a similar way. They cost similar sort of money. They are slightly different in weight. The McAllister is about a kilo heavier than the Parkside, if that uh, affects your decision. Uh, and it is a, a tough decision to make. Um, it would be remiss of me, I think, not to mention the fact that last year's Parkside saws had a few quality control issues at this kind of price point. We are the quality control, I think. And if you do hit any snags, then just return the saw. But unfortunately, if you return the saw to uh, Lidl's, though their customer service is excellent, because of the popularity of the saw and the relatively short supply, you're probably going to re be returning it for a refund rather than a replacement, certainly not a timely replacement anyway. And I think given that and the guide rail niggles, I think I would actually put my money into a McAllister, even if it is a little bit more expensive. As I said at the start, I think you, you can price match this with Screwfix to the £70 that, um, or certainly in some stores, to the £70 that the Parkside costs. 
but it is uh, around £80 now, so it would cost you a little bit more. But then that, I think, is the price of availability. That's the price you pay for having this saw when you want it, rather than it being a once-a-year special buy. And despite the weight, I think I would put my money into another McAllister, partly because it is the uh, reincarnation of the old Titan. Uh, in fact, I'll leave it there uh, for this one. I think I'll spend uh, a couple of minutes while my uh, member credits roll. And thank you very much to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members for all their support. They really do help me to keep the lights on here and make these kind of videos. I think while those credits roll, I'll just quickly go through the differences between this Mac Alistair saw and my old Titan saw. Uh, but that's it for this one. Thanks so much for taking a look and I'll see you in the next one. So before we get into the before we get into the McAllister and Titan comparison. Just one more thing about the Parkside. Fairly obviously, I don't have any kind of special relationship with Lidl. I queued up like everybody else to buy one. In fact, this one was gifted to the channel. Uh, this is a 2019 saw. There were a couple of slight changes to the 2020 model. There was a change to the, to the faceplate, but I can't guarantee that this saw is gonna be exactly the same as, as what's released uh, on June the 6th in a couple of days time. One thing I did notice that was also pointed out to me uh, by a few folks in the comments was that if you look at the little uh, website and the little pictures are all based on this this type of saw. Um, the, the, one of the things it says is uh, under the description uh, spacer wedge prevents the saw blade from jamming. Now there's no riving knife on either of these saws but I do wonder if the 2021 Parkside saw might actually have a riving knife in it in which case it will be a different design. That's really interesting. Uh, if you pick up one of those saws, let me know about it in the comments. Um, but for now, um, you know, this is this is the best I can do. This is the, the Parkside saw that I have, and as far as I know, that's the one that's going to be released be released in a couple of days. Uh, when it comes to the venerable Titan saw, um, it really is <laughs> an absolute dead ringer in every possible way and I was going to say short of stripping it down and pulling the components apart you wouldn't really know uh, whether they were different or not and to be honest even then you probably wouldn't know because over the length of a product's life like this and I think this one's been around for about was around for about five years I would expect some of those internal components to change to be perfectly honest so uh, even doing a, an AVE and pulling the whole thing apart isn't is no guarantee uh, of, of checking the actual componentry out. But it is an absolute dead ringer. Um, it is the same molding, the same casting, as far as I can tell on the base plate. It's exactly the same, apart from the color scheme. Uh, blue buttons on the McAllister, and yellow with a gray accent um, uh, on the Titan. So, as far as I can tell, they are absolutely identical. Um, the the uh, 2021, McAllister saw is identical, as far as I can tell, to the, whatever this was, five years ago, four years ago, Titan. So yes, buy with confidence, I think. Um, so yeah, all good stuff. Uh, thanks, as always, for taking a look, and I'll see you next time.